<laughs> Thank you, Lord. Mm. Jesus, I love you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Here we are. <laughs> How y'all doing? We're really excited about this uh, revelation video. This is number three, right? <laughs> yeah, because the first one was on what we were going to be doing. Yes. So this is number three of the lives for Revelation. And we are going to um, pray a little bit first. And I know people are going to be coming on right now. So we're just going to um, pray. We're a little bit early because we wanted to make sure everything came on okay. Everything it's, looks so okay. It's, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's um, except for me, I look a little weird. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, we're not professionals, but that's okay. We're just being obedient. So just, that's you right. know, work with us, bear right. with us. So, um, yes. Okay. It's uh, just a delay. So thank it you, just kind of freaks me out a little. <laughs> yeah, we have a delay, but it's okay. Um, thank you, Lord. Just until uh, others come on, we're just going to take this time and just. You know, we've been here for an hour just soaking and, and just um, just waiting on the Lord to see. Thank you, Lord. So, Lord, this is your desire, Lord, to do these videos, Lord. Lord, on the book of Revelation, the unveiling of who you are, Lord. And so, Lord, tonight, I know Linda and I both, Lord Jesus, we just want just to be vessels. Vessels of your Holy Spirit, vessels of your Spirit that you would move through, speak through, release through, love through, manifest through. Reveal through. Reveal who you are to those who are tuning in even tonight and hereafter, Lord. Lord, unveil yourself to us, Lord, in the prayer that we prayed on the very first live for every live that we do. That you would unveil who you are by your Holy Spirit to everyone who tunes in. As we go into the, to the church, Lord Jesus of Smyrna, Lord, Lord, whatever your desire and your dream was when you revealed the church of Smyrna, Lord Jesus. To the angel and to John, Lord, when you revealed what was your heart, what was your desire, what was your design, what did you want to reveal, Jesus, to us? What did you want to reveal about the church of Smyrna? What did you want to reveal? What was the desire of your heart, God? God, that we would be able to release that and translate that, Lord Jesus. Not only just for knowledge of what was released, but how does that pertain to us today? Yes. How does that pertain to us being transformed today by your spoken word, Lord? Yes. And so, Lord, we just thank you for tonight. We thank you for everyone tuning in. We thank you for your word that is alive. Yes. Your word that is made alive as we release it by your spirit, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Show us who you are, Jesus. In the church of Smyrna, show us who you are, Lord. Show us who you are on this live, Lord. Reveal yourself, Lord. We desire to know you were hungry. We need you, Lord. We need you more in this next second than we did in the last second. We need you, Jesus. We acknowledge our need for you. And also we acknowledge our desire for you, Jesus. Beloved bridegroom, we're nothing without you. We're nothing without you. Lord, we love you. And Holy Spirit, 
the Shikaniah God, <laughs> the Holy Spirit. We recognize you, we honor you, we bless you. We bless you, we honor you. Lead us tonight. Lead us, speak to us, quicken us. As we extol the name of Jesus on high, as we come into complete unison with you, Holy Spirit, as we come into oneness, honoring Jesus the Christ, unveiling Jesus the Christ, Holy Spirit, as we become one in the call of the bride on this live tonight. May we never grieve you. May we never dishonor you. May we never hurt you. May we never wound you, Holy Spirit. May we honor you all of our days. May we honor you first and foremost. May we honor you as Jesus honors you. And we just say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for overshadowing us. Mm. Reveal your love through this broadcast in Jesus, mighty and holy and amazing and sanctified, glorious, and strong name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Ooh, wow. So we are going to go into, um, I know last week we were talking about Ephesus uh, chapter 2, verse 1. We thought we were going to go through some of this, but the Lord is really, and I said this before, is, is he's, he's wanting us to go slow. He's wanting us to slow down because we want to take our time. We're not in a hurry. Um, this is not something that we just want to teach for the sake of teaching because we talked about this is the spirit and the word working together uh, to bring you into encounter, encounter with the unveiling of Jesus Christ. And this is what revelation is. And so we're not going to go too much into that since we went to the other videos. They are on the YouTube channel. They're also on our Lilies of the Valley uh, Facebook page. And... Um, We've been sharing them on our personal pages, so you can always go back and rewatch, you know, and take your time also. But we're not going to rush through uh, the lives. We're going to try to do these every Friday and just kind of walk through. And we are by no means professionals, <laughs> like we told you. You know, the Lord just asked me to do this, and I was so excited because I love the book of Revelation. He said, I want you to walk through it and, and um, believe me for encounter, and that's yes. what I'm doing. And um, I just want you to, to know that this is the Lord's heart. He asked me to do this. And Linda, too. Linda's come on now. She's kind of the armor bearer for Lilies of the Valley and myself. And so love her to know. I mean, just dearly, okay? I love her so much. And I know um, we just honor her presence here. Thank you for coming on. And, um, you know, whatever the Lord gives you, just, just say it. Because you know we work together. Yes. And it's really, really important. And so... Um, so the, the church of Smyrna, last week we talked about Ephesus or Ephesus, however you want to pronounce it or however you want to say it. Um, the church of Ephesus, uh, you know, it talked about one of the main things in the church of Ephesus was they were cold in their love. They had lost their first love. And now we're going into Smyrna, okay, which is interesting because Smyrna means the suffering church or uh, suffering. It also means myrrh, which represents, um, you know... The myrrh would, would represent that sweet smelling savor that's also put on the dead uh, in their burial. So, and myrrh also means a sanctification process if you go into the deep Hebrew text to sanctify. Um, so it's interesting because we, we go from, you know, cold in her love to now um, sanctification or suffering, which the cold believer, you know, suffers sometimes when we enter into suffering. If, if our love has grown cold for the Lord, it's like we enter into this suffering and it's like, wow, now we're back in love with Jesus and we're back to a place where we're revived again. Sometimes that happens. Like, you know, he gives revival on a platter of destruction, that type of thing. Like when something happens, it just seems like, okay, we, we run back to God, which is good. But at the same time, um, what we want to understand about um, 
Smyrna is, it's, it's amazing. The sweet smelling savor, which comes from the myrrh. It's like the suffering church. And we're going to talk about who Smyrna is, what they're about. And then I'm going to go through some depth of understanding what does it mean to suffer? What is the suffering that the Lord is speaking of? Because I think this is key to the church of Smyrna. Um, we know that uh, <laughs> myrrh was even put on the burial with the burial of Jesus. With I mean, so there's just a lot to go into, and so I just uh, like I said, I'm going to go slow and just take my time because there's a couple different things I want to read um, that are pertaining to suffering, and we all know that Jesus Christ, okay. Jesus Christ learned obedience through the things that he suffered. So why would we be any different? Sometimes we don't understand the suffering that God allows for us to be perfected and purified and brought into a, um, a deep love connection with him by the Holy Spirit. We don't understand it sometimes. And so um, if Jesus learned obedience through the yes. things that he suffered, how much more... We're not beyond him. <laughs> um, yeah, how much more would we right. have to suffer to learn obedience? I mean, it's wow. just, it's unreal to me sometimes when, um, you know, we, I know, and it's, it's hard. And we're going to talk a little bit about it. I don't want to go too much. I'm going to get way ahead of everything because I want to get into I know. <laughs> so, um, so let's go to Revelation chapter two and let's see. So Christ's letter to Smyrna, Revelations chapter 2. Yes, Thank you, Lord. <laughs> oh, okay, so I'm going to read from the Passion again. I want to also read from the King James, but I'm going to read from the Passion right now. So, um... Verse 8, write the following to the measure. Jesus. Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit loves it when we talk about fellowshipping with the sufferings of Christ. There's, there's so much power in our suffering mm. and we don't understand it now we're taught we of course martyrdom we're talking about mart <laughs> yes. but i'm going to take you and it's going to get deep okay so write the following to the messenger of the congregation of smyrna <laughs> the congregation of the suffering church the sweet smelling savor church for these are the words of the one who is the beginning and the end. These are the words of Jesus Christ. He is the beginning and the end. The one who became a corpse but came back to life. The one who died and resurrected. So he's letting you know this is coming from the one. Come on now. Wow. Who is all things. Wow. He is eternal. He is eternity. So these words are coming from him. He's the one. Oh, don't forget about me, suffering church. <laughs> I suffered and I died and I rose again. Yeah. So he's making that clear. Okay. He says, I am aware. And I'm going to read the whole thing like we do every one. And we're going to go back over everything and, and get find the real depth and the meaning. Because I think it's really, really important. So I'm aware of all the painful difficulties that you have passed through. And even your financial hardships. Even though, in fact, you possess rich treasure. <laughs> <laughs> and I am fully aware of the slander, 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 however you want to say it, <laughs> that has come against you from those who claim to be Jews but are not. For they are a satanic congregation. Do not yield to fear in the face of suffering to come, but be aware of this. The devil is about to have some of you thrown into prison to test your faith. For 10 days you will have distress, but remain faithful to the day you die. 
Remain faithful until the day you die. And I will give you the victor's crown of life. The one whose heart is open, let him listen carefully to what the Spirit is presently saying to all the churches. So those who have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. So the one who conquers will not be harmed by the second death. Okay, so, and there's only a few verses here, but we have so much to go over. <laughs> because when we talk about the persecuted church, the suffering church. Now, uh, I, I don't want to go too much into the history of... Um, because you know you can you can research that yourself about the history of uh, Smyrna because we know it's modern day Turkey. Um, there's I mean there's a lot uh, there's a lot of depth in that. But I want to just get to the main points. And I don't know if you have your Bible where you got the key points um, to go over. So we know Smyr uh, Smyrna means myrrh. Okay, myrrh is a, a resin. It's a bitter taste. It's it's, it's used. It's crushed and used in perfumes, anointing oils, incense, and it's also a preservative in burial. Now, I want to read this to you because it's really, really important for what we're fixing to go into. It is a symbol of death, okay? Now, we know that the Bible says, okay, that we have got to lose our life to gain his life. And so this is something that the Lord wants to reiterate here um, because I think it's really important um, for this to be, uh, to sink, to sink into your heart. Let this sink into your heart. I just seen a vision yes. of that. Let yes. it sink into your heart. I'm praying that your heart is pliable tonight, pliable yes. enough that this revelation would sink into your heart, that you are not your own. You have been bought with a price. Jesus Christ purchased you. Your life belongs to him. This yes. is what he's wanting to reiterate to you. Your yes. life. He's saying, look, I already died. I already rose again. Done. Okay. He's letting you know he's already paid the price, but yes. for your life. For yes. your life, that means that you can't you don't you can't determine if you've been purchased. You don't determine uh, what what you do tomorrow or what you do today or what you do next month. You don't determine anything. I mean, it must be nice to have a schedule for some people. I'm just saying. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, I mean, and I, I'm not saying it's not good to have a schedule. Please understand what I'm saying. You have to steward your time well. I understand all that. And there's. You know, for those of us who do things, but sometimes um, when we make out our schedules, we don't even we don't even ask the Lord what He would like to schedule us. You see what I'm saying? Like we don't even get His what what Lord? What do you want? Where's what's Tuesday for? Or what do I what am I doing this for? What do you want me to do this day? Or, or even when we get up in the morning, Lord, what's what what's for today? Let me know. We just put stuff. Our we make our own schedules, and that's what I mean when I say it must be nice because. And people call me and say, Julie, did this and this and that. I'm like, I have no clue. I don't know what the Lord's going to do, but I'll try to get there when I can, God willing. But sometimes what happens is, and that's why I don't make commitments um, in that sense. I do when it comes to what God tells me to do. Like this right here, I make a commitment every Friday night. That's, a, that's in my schedule because Jesus Christ asked me to do that. Yeah. But as yeah. far as if someone asks me to do something and yeah. she knows that, I'm like, okay, well, we'll see what happens. But then when we do ministry stuff, when God says we do it, that's in his yes. schedule. And so that's what I'm talking about. It must be nice because I had, was talking to someone the other day, and this is just an example. They're like, okay, God told me to, uh, to go here and do this. And I'm like, okay, that's awesome. And then they said, and this is going to happen. And then uh, uh, on this third week, we're going to do this and on this. And I want to do this and I want to do that. And I was just thinking to myself, wow, I bet you it's not even going to uh, be like that. <laughs> <laughs> they have it all planned out. The first part was good because God told me, but they had everything else planned out. And that's what I mean by that. Your life belongs to Jesus Christ. Don't you think if your life belongs to him that you should maybe inquire of the Lord? <laughs> David, inquire of the Lord yes. and find out what it is that he would have you to, to do. Not, I mean, and not tell him what he's going to do. Thank you. And not try to put him in your will or him in your plans. We do that a lot, don't we? We're all guilty. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so <laughs> just paying attention to that and really understanding that this is about, wow, his mission, right? His mission. That's why he lets you know up front here in chapter two, he lets you know that, look, I'm the one that died and rose again. <laughs> I'm the one that handled it. Okay. Thank you, Lord. 
So um, when he says, and he also says, like, I am the first and the last. So he's letting you know I'm all things. I'm everything. He's letting you know that. It's, it's amazing to me. So he is the beginning. So he's preeminence. He's the first in rank of influence. He's the first and he's the last. He's the first in every place, in every area. The firstborn in Greek is protokotos, which means foremost, in time, in place, in order, of, and, and of most importance. The only importance. He is first and foremost. He's letting you know. And he's also, oh, I'm, I'm also the end. You put me first, but you don't know what's going to happen. In, oh, I'm letting you know I'm the end too. I'm all things. This is what Jesus is saying to you. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Breath. Everything. And that's that's in the beginning of chapter two for the church of Smyrna. The suffering church. Okay. Wow. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> He's the first fruits of everything. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. I'm just gonna go through this because it's really, really important for us to understand this. I mean, we a lot of us know it, but and so knowing this. I think it's easier going through our trials and our persecution knowing that he's everything and knowing that we have given him our lives because we can trust him. Right. Okay, and so when we give him everything and we know that we are purchased, bought with a price, we can trust him. And that's really, really important. So him being the author and the finisher of our faith, it's like he, that's the beginning and the end. Right. Right? Awesome. Even of yes. our faith. Okay, yes. so in Hebrews 12, it says, wherefore, seeing that we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and every sin that does so easily beset us. Now, we read this so many times, but let us run with patience for the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of everything. So with patience, we set aside every weight. We're going to go through persecutions. We're going to go through suffering. Yes. But what did, we, what did we say before we even started this? That Jesus learned obedience. Through things. So you are learning obedience through the things that you suffer, the things that you walk through. It's really important. And so... There's a price that we have to pay. What's the price? Our life. Hello? Our lives. We okay. need that exchange. <laughs> we need that exchange, so it's not ours. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. So he, when he said he was dead, and oh, I've got to go through this, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus in the church of Smyrna, he's identifying with the church. He's And it's so amazing because Jesus does that. when he It's like he explains himself, but he, he uses, he identifies himself throughout his word. It's so crazy. Um, he says, I'm dead and now I'm alive. So he's identifying with the church in Smyrna by stating that he has already gone through everything that they're about to face. Okay? Wow. They're about to face this death, okay? Why? Because they're suffering church. And so, um, wow. <laughs> and they will also be resurrected, which we know in John 11. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Lord. All right, so back to Hebrews. For as much as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Yay. Now what he's saying here about the devil? He's destroyed. Okay, no, we're going to go back and show you. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't get ahead of him, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Mm. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to slow down. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, yes, sir. Okay, so let's go back. He wants me to go back. We're going to slow down. All right, so right here. He says, I am aware of all the painful difficulties that have passed through. Whew, that you have passed through and your financial hardships, even though in fact you possess rich treasure. 
I am fully aware of all the slander that has come against you from those who claim to be Jews but are not, for they are the satanic congregation. So I want to talk about this right now before we go any further. I don't want to go any further because this is so amazing. So he's saying, I am aware of all the painful difficulties. So Jesus knows about all the painful difficulties that you're going through. I want to read something that's so powerful and so amazing. Um, I really love um, Watchman Nee. It's just so awesome. I want to read this in this book because this has a lot of people, um, especially in the church, the bride of Christ, don't they don't understand suffering as much as the Lord wants them to understand it. Now, what, what am I talking about? We go through things in this life that we do not understand. I mean, there's things that I walk through after I got saved that if Jesus wasn't with me walking through them, I would not have made it. The fact that he was with me is the reason why I made it. I can't understand. I, I mean, I can't explain it to you. I don't understand it, but I know he was with me. And I know for some of you that are watching, you know, he is with us in the fire. He walks with us down the road of uh, destruction, right? He walks with us down the road of darkness and death. That's what it says in, in Psalms, right? Even our own choices. Psalms 23, okay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, for that with me. So we have to understand that even in the storm, when he's there sleeping, everywhere that we go through difficulties in life, Jesus Christ is producing something within us. He's allowing something to be tempered within us. And it's really, really important because when the, the heat gets really, really hot, we have to understand that he's tempering us. And, and he's, he's, he's giving us the stability to be able to withstand because he even said with patience, you know, that's why I don't understand why people don't pray for patience. You should you should be praying for patience because the Bible says, let patience have her perfect work for then with this patience, then you will be able to withstand. You understand what I'm saying? Patience has a perfect work in you. I can't remember the end part of it. Um, but I have it written down here, so I'll go back to it. But patience will have her perfect work. And there's something that's so amazing. And then you will know the perfect will of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So if you let patience have her perfect work in you, it's then that you're going to understand and know the perfect will of God in your life. And so um, that's really key. So pray for patience. Okay. Yeah, you're going to go through things in your life that are going to cause you to have to have patience in order to produce a perfect work in you. So what? I mean, don't you want, I mean, we're becoming, right? We're becoming, we're becoming yes. the bride of Christ. And so it's really, really important. And so, um, also too, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, but I'll go into that next. Okay. So this, this is, uh, in Watchman Nee's book called the secret to spiritual power, which is oh, such a good book, but it talk, he talks about a living sacrifice. And I want to read this. It says, according to the Bible, salvation is related primarily to the world, not to hell. Uh, the opposite of salvation is the world. And as long as we belong to the world, we are not saved from it. Salvation is a matter of position. As long as a person is in Adam, walking according to the course of this world, he stands opposite to God, making him an enemy to God. We know this, okay? Salvation deals with what you've come out of as well and what we enter into. Eternal life tells me what I have entered into. Okay, and we know hell is a place for those with judgment that are separated from God. Um, but here's what I want to talk about. Baptism is a public announcement that declares I have come out of the world. Wow. As it is with Noah and the flood, so it is with baptism. For baptism includes both immersion and emergence. What cannot pass through the water is not saved, but is drowned forever. Wow. <laughs> However, what has passed through the waters and emerged from them is saved. The water of baptism serves as a tomb, Romans 6, 4. What is buried must be dead, but what emerges must be alive in resurrection. Now having emerged from the water, let us therefore walk in a newness of life. A person is buried only after he is dead. Death, burial, and resurrection. Yes. Okay? You would vigorously object to being buried before you were dead for death is the prerequisite of burial having been crucified with Christ which we know is scripture I am dead hence my baptism is a testimony to that fact spiritual truth is even more real than physical fact God has joined us to Christ hence his death is our death wow wow 
I want I don't want to go too long into this. I want to just read a couple different ones. Okay, so his death is our death. We're buried with him. We die with him, we're buried with him, and we're risen with him. Death, burial, and resurrection. A lot of you are coming on here, Lilies. You know the truths in scripture concerning this. Okay, I wanted to read that because it's it was so important to understand that we are baptized with him, we, we die with him, we're buried with him, and we're risen with him. So you are going to go through the process of death, burial, and resurrection. And there's a deep understanding in the church of Smyrna here because they are a sweet-smelling savor. Why? Because they allowed the death the burial, and the resurrection to come into their life. They fellowshiped with the Lord's suffering through the things that they went through, persecution, which is a very much a position for the body of Christ. And I want you to understand this. Um, wow. <laughs> so in Hebrews 10, 36, it says, For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Why do we need endurance? Because we're going to want to quit because of the pressure that is coming against us. There is a pressure that's coming against us. Even when Jesus learned obedience to the things he suffered. I mean, in the Garden of Gethsemane, some call it Gethsemane, Gethsemane, whatever. Um, in the Garden, okay? And I really feel like right now, in this time, in this season, the church... Of of Jesus Christ is in the garden of Gethsemane. They are they're in the garden awaiting right here. And and the Lord showed me something really powerful and profound uh, a few years ago um, in that scripture because he showed me, you know, in Jesus, because he showed me the side of man, because Jesus is 100% man and 100% God. We know that. And so he showed me the side of man. And in the side of man, what he showed me was that Jesus went back to uh, see his disciples there. Like, he's like, couldn't you pray with me for an hour? I mean, couldn't you just pray with me? They fell asleep. And, you know, and then he went back to the father and he said, Lord, uh, father, pass this cup from me. Okay. Or then he said, when he, when he gave in, he said, okay, not my will, but your will be done. So what the Lord showed me was is sometimes when we're in the garden of Gethsemane, we, we run to go look for people to intercede for us because we don't want to face uh, that which God is asking us to face. We don't want to take on the will of God if it means the cross. We don't want to take on the will of God if it means we have to die. So we go look for people to pray for us to, to um, help us with our suffering. And what God's wanting to do with that suffering is for you to surrender, for you to yield, for you to say, okay, God, not my will, but your your will be done and so half of the people in the body of Christ will never fulfill their destiny because they're not willing to pay the price they're not willing to pay the cost they're not willing to uh, allow the crushing they're not willing to allow the crushing for God to produce an oil they're not willing to allow uh, they're not willing for um, them to die or even to bear their cross or to take up their cross they're not willing to let go of the things that God's asking them to let go of and die in the garden for, for them to be able to fulfill their destiny. So most of the church is in that place. And most of the church uh, has walked away. They didn't say not, not uh, my will but your will be done. Like Jesus did. Which his destiny was the cross. Thank God that he surrendered to God's will. You know. And so that's just something to really really think about. It's very important. Okay. So none of us. We don't, we don't want the cross. We don't want to bear our cross. Jesus said that you're not fit to be my disciple if you don't. And the what is isn't telling us? <laughs> no, the church doesn't talk about the cost. Most of the church. Some churches do. Some, I, I want to give do. honor and credit because I love the church. It's God's vehicle. But most of the churches don't talk about the cost. Okay? They want to tell you 10 steps to get... Anyway. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm not going to go there. Okay, so we don't want the cross. So we're more interested in the crown. Yes. I mean, because he talks about the crown. Right. right in the yes. last verse. But we don't want the cross to get to the crown. And so the condition is not, uh, it, it, it's like, it's, it's the condition that most of us are in as man. We have, uh, so the Lord has many lovers of his crown, but few lovers of his cross. And I feel like in this church of Smyrna, what the Lord is reiterating to us is, uh, is that place of suffering that produces a myrrh, a sweet smell that produces something uh, for him. And so it's, it's almost like people want Easter without Good Friday. You know, I don't believe in Easter, but you understand what I'm saying? I mean, I, the resurrection I do, but um, it's like they want to have that without, <laughs> yes. you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So this I is, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my tongue feels like it's tied all over the place, but um, I'm just going to go on because I, what's time looking like? Oh, Thank you, Lord. See. It's 
Right. Okay, so we're doing good. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, in Philippians 1.29, this is an interesting verse here. It says, for to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. For you it's been granted to suffer. What does that mean? <laughs> for his sake. Yes, God will crucify without pity those whom he desires to raise without measure. Jesus, I'm going to say that again. Yes. God will crucify without pity those whom he desires to raise without measure. Jesus Christ had the spirit without measure. Moses didn't. David didn't. Isaiah didn't. Jesus Christ had the spirit without measure. The Bible says that he gave him the spirit without measure. Well, Jesus also said you were, at, as Christ is in the earth, he says, as I am in the earth, so are you. So the Lord, the Father, the Holy Spirit has given us the spirit without measure. We have the all-knowing spirit of the living God inside of us. Okay, we have the spirit without measure. Wow. Okay. And so it's very, very important. So God will crucify us without pity whom he desires to raise. And I love that, that saying from A.W. Tozer that says, um, the ones who God will use greatly, he wounds deeply. So if there's, does God wound you? You go through wounding, yes. Yeah. There's things that you have to walk through for God to perfect who you are. It's scripture. And I'm going to go over that scripture, like I said. And, and um you know, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you through the word because you're having um, encounters with the word right now. And as this word goes forth, you're going to begin to encounter Jesus. He's unveiling himself to you and you're coming into a fellowship with his sufferings. God wants to crucify us from head to foot, crucify in the flesh daily, Paul said, right? But crucify us from head to foot, making our own powers ridiculous and useless and the desire to raise us without measure for his glory and for our eternal good. So we have to come to that place of knowing that we are useless. We are nothing without God. I mean, I was um, uh, just thinking about this uh, when we had in, in uh, an academy that we were a part of, we had a worship, what's called Worship Wednesdays, and someone had shared on there um, that was so powerful. And it just, it was a reminder that we are dependent 100% on Jesus Christ for everything. We should be because he has to become our everything. Because if we do anything on our own strength, we, we leave him out. We leave him out. It's just plain and simple. And so in this desire to raise us without measure, it's for his glory and for our eternal good. Our eternal good. Thank you, Lord. So willingness to suffer for Jesus' sake. This is what we've lost from the Christian church, especially in the Western church. But anyway, I'm not coming against churches on here. Remember, we're not going to do that. So, <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Well, unfortunately, that's how a lot of I grew up and did not learn this. So, yes, it gets home. Yes. So we have forgotten that before our Redeemer could rise and sing among his, his brethren, he had to first bow his head and suffer among his brethren. Okay? The price of humility is death. People say all the time. You know, I want, I want to have humility. I want to be humble. And, and then there's a the false humility and all these things happen. I guarantee you, if you lose your life and you die and you only desire God's dream, humility is, it's inevitable. Everything that Jesus is, in, is inevitable. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. We forget so easily that in the spiritual life there must be the darkness of the night before there can ever be the radiance of the dawn. Okay, it gets really dark before the dawn. Before the life of resurrection can be ever known, we must have the death, Bashia, the death and the... Uh, there must be a death to dominion of self. Self has to be crucified. Okay? Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, oh, Jesus. Okay, so um, a lot of I love the old time um, prophets. I listen to them <laughs> all the time. I have this book that's. Uh, there's a thousand prophets, even from 
almost, it's like 1200, 1300, 1400, I mean way back. And I listen to it all the time because I love them. I just think they're amazing. But there's these experiences that these men, one of the things that are, that you will find that is so um, key. I mean, it's like every one of them agree to this one standard. It seems like in all these old time prophets, they teach that the Lord cannot fully bless a man until he has first conquered him. And that is so important because if you get to a place where you feel like you can do it on your own, and I, I've had people tell me this before, you know, I don't believe God's in everything. I believe he, he gave us a mind to make our own decisions. Maybe, <laughs> but that's not Bible. Hmm. It's not Bible. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the true sons of God. Man's wisdom is nothing. It's God's wisdom. When you yield yourself, yourself fully to the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord lusts to envy. He, God is a jealous God. Everything that you put your time and your attention to. Some of the things that you think are God are not even God. Because you, you're doing them just for good work's sake. Good works is important with faith and all that. And faith is works by love. I'm not talking about that. But have you asked or considered what the Lord wants? I mean, these are things to think about. We're talking about the suffering church. We're talking about <laughs> So let him conquer you. The degree of blessing enjoyed by any man will correspond exactly with the completeness of God's victory over him. Where he has everything in your life. Yeah, this is a tough one tonight. Yeah. I even told Linda, this is a tough one tonight. Because... <laughs> uh, but, but for Jesus to leave, it's like getting in a boat and having the keel cut off. Oof. If you have the keel cut mm -hmm. off, you don't know where you're going. And if you try and make your own decisions on where you're going, you're not going to fulfill what God needed you for in the first place. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Oh, this is the ultimate conquest right here. Defeating ourself. This is the ultimate yes. conquest. Okay. This is the suffering church. Now, these were martyrs we're talking about. And of course, they suffered. I mean, like I said, there's rich, in-depth history here. We know um, even with Caesar, Caesar, I mean, they had to bow to Caesar uh, as God, as Lord. So they were killed. They were murdered. All these things happened to them because they didn't bow. They truly loved Jesus Christ. They truly loved the word of God. They truly loved, okay? And this is why they died. This is why they were the suffering church because Caesar and, and all of you, and, and, and they tormented them and, and um, they were martyred. They tortured them, okay? And they, they lost everything. They would rob them. And I mean, I went through the history of different things. So I'm talking about all their crops and all things were destroyed because they would not bow to Caesar. And of course, we're, that's very important to state too. But the Lord, why did Jesus Christ put this in the book of Revelation? Why did he want to give it to the angel to give to John on the island of Patmos when, when he was suffering there, John? I mean, this is very important. It was going to be released today. And we read in chapter 1 that whoever uh, not only reads this book of Revelation, but lives by it, right? And walks it out, receives the blessing. Yes. This is really important. And so getting the full in-depth understanding. Okay? So you are the you are the greatest conquest. Your life. Letting go of you. Dying to yourself. Okay, taking up your cross. And a lot of you already know all these scriptures. That's why I said for the sake of time, an hour is not long enough for me to go into all this. Okay, so I'm going to read this to you uh, from A.W. Tozer. This is so, so good. In the book from Rooted in Righteousness, I thought it was so good. Um, because it has to do with the suffering church. Okay, it has to do with um, Smyrna, but it also has to do with us. What is the Lord saying to us? And I also want to go over really quick when it says... Um, the Jews about the synagogue. We'll go over that next. Um, I think we have a little bit of time to go in that. Okay, so we're good. So, 
Let me die lest I die. Only let me see thy face. For that was the prayer of St. Augustine. Okay, this is really important. Hide not thy face from me. He cried in an agony of desire that he might repose to see his face. That he would enter into his heart. That he would forget his own ills and embrace thee, the soul good, the Lord, the soul good, the soul good of the Lord. This longing to die, to get everything that we have need of from the only way that we might not hide from the lovely face of God. Becoming a hungry hearted believer to die is to gain. That's what Paul said. Okay. There is no contradiction here for there are before us two kinds of dying, a dying to be sought and a dying to be avoided at any cost. What are you dying for? To be sought by the Lord? Hmm. Or are you dying to be avoided from the Lord at any cost? All your lower lovers that we talked about. Now we're building up to something here through these. We're in chapter two. That's it. <laughs> That's what I was telling Linda. This is just going to be for a select few, maybe a handful of people that really want to go deeper, that really want to encounter the true Jesus Christ. The true Jesus Christ is a refining fire. Yes. The true glory of God will purify you. The true glory of God will I fill them. I had a visitation from the glory of God on 888 at a lily gathering. And I went on a fast for 40 days and I cried out for the glory of God. And that my, was my cry. And I had my team cry out too. My team at that time cried out for the glory of God. 12 women cried out for the glory of God with me. And during that meeting, the glory of God showed up and I was crying. I don't want to see the glory ever again. It ripped my insides out. The holy presence of the most high God came into the room. The glory of God in such a way but the lord had to show me he had to give me a taste and then after it lifted the, the glory lifted it was like that we had an amazing meeting people were transformed and healed things happened that i can't even explain but i want you to get an understanding of the glory of god jesus christ the refining fire comes in to purify perfect and to make whole that's true transformation that brings reformation. Okay? Or you can just go along and live life and say you love Jesus and only give him part of yourself. He'll let you get away with that, but he won't know you. And you won't be known by him. And you won't know him. Oh, it's a beautiful thing to know him. Jesus. Ha. So to St. Augustine, the sight of God inwardly, wow, was life itself. But anything less than that was death. We need to get to the point where we're so reckless that we that we want Jesus into such an estate that everything else is death. Everything else is Worthless. Even Jesus said, Bishana, if we love anything else more than him, we're not fit to be his disciple. Then he also said in Matthew, if we give up husbands, children, wives, homes, lands for his sake, that in this time we will receive a hundredfold and then eternal life. So it's not like he's, it's not like we're letting go of inheritance or abundant life. No, we are living the most glorious life by dying. We're letting go of what the earthly life could give you. Yes. Which is temporary. <laughs> it will go away. Wow, Jesus. Yes. Mm. So our prayer should be, let me die. Let me suffer for thy sake, O Lord. Yes. For suffering produces in me a holy fruit that is acceptable to God. 
or in the fellowships, the fellowship of your suffering, Lord, I yes. truly come to know you. I truly come to know you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Ah, we are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live. Yet not we, but Christ that lives in us. This is really, really important. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Lord. I do have one or two prayer requests, and it's 740, just so you know. Thank you, Lord. Okay. I just feel like I don't have enough time to go over this because there's so much scripture that I want to go over. There's so many things that I want to go over. To crucify the flesh brings true purity of the heart. Yes. And there's a lot of us, I mean, we talk about Christ likeness and all these things. There's a lot of us and we talk about character. None of this is ever going to, it's not something that you can attain or learn without dying to yourself. Right. There's no way. Yes. There, 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 it, there's no way. It doesn't mix. <laughs> huh? It doesn't mix. Jesus. You yourself, you don't get there. So let's talk about, um, how much more time do we have? I don't know if I should go further. We um, yeah. You still have 15 minutes. Okay. We're good. All right. All right. Thank you, Lord. So Romans 5, um, verse 10 says, For if then we were enemies and we were reconciled by God to the death of his son, how much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by this life. So when we understand that we are saved because and reconciled to God because of the death of Jesus Christ, we get an understanding that because it was so costly, we have now been reconciled to the Father. And the only way that we can live a life where we become ministers of reconciliation is if we let go of our life and take on his life so that we can experience his resurrection. Wow. And not just There's just too ways, much. But not just doing his ways like a legalistic list, but... Wow. Taking on his life. Thank you, Lord. Share it about Love it. I love it. All right, so Jesus was saying, I know thy works, I know thy tribulation, I know thy poverty, but thou art rich. Why was he saying they were rich? Because they were being purified by the things that they walked through. They were being purified. That was the gold. That was the purification. They were rich. Even though they had no money, they were rich because of their suffering. Okay, so, wow. <laughs> they faithfully served the Lord. Yes. So he says, I know thy tribulation. So Jesus here commends the godly believers of Smyrna for patiently enduring all of these trials for his name's sake. In 2 Timothy 3.12 it says, And yea, that, that will live a godly life in Christ Jesus, you will suffer per persecution. Notice how it says, those in 2 Timothy 3.12, that live a godly life in Christ will suffer persecution. That we're being purified and being conformed into the image of Christ in Romans 8, 28 and 29. So God is, yes, he's working all things to the good, to the end, and will perfect the works that he started in us. He also says that in Philippians 1, 6, all these things will be worked and turned around for the good to those who he loves and who loves God and who are called according to his purpose and that are in Christ. This is very, very important to understand. Thank you, Lord. In John 16, 33, he says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So Jesus is saying, you're going to have tribulation, but in me you will have peace, because you will know that I have overcome the world, because you're dwelling in Jesus now. In Christ is a whole other sermon. And so in Acts 14, 22, it says, Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. And so, what, what, 
how much time? We only have a little bit of time, so I'm going to go over this again. So what are we learning from the Church of Smyrna here? Okay? We're learning that we are going to suffer, and we learn obedience to the things that we suffer. We learn that we may, some of us, even be martyred. We may, some of us, even be, uh, we're definitely, all of us are going to be persecuted. There's going to be things that we're going to go through, but the Lord said, you are rich. You have to understand that you are going to have to die to yourself, die to the areas around you. You will be pressured on every side, especially with what's going on in the earth today. Don't think you're going to escape it because you're not. Because it's going to get worse. And we have got to understand, like the Church of Smyrna did, uh, that we will become a sweet-smelling savor for the things that we endure and the things that we go through in Christ. Because we have to find our peace in Him knowing that He has overcome the world. It's very important to understand that. And it says um, here um, that there's those who are claimed to be Jews that are not, but they're the congregation of Satan. Remember in the word where Jesus said, uh, spoke to the, oh, Shabbat Rabbat, said, you are from the congregation of your father, Satan. Okay, and he even told the Pharisees and the Sadducees that they're raising up sons uh, after their father, Satan, that are worse off than themselves. They're, they're, they're leading them blindly. <clears throat> Okay, and so this is uh, particularly talking about Jews here. Um, uh, wow, I don't want to. I don't want to go too fast because there's a couple other scriptures that I want. I want to just say, and you know what? We can get into that second half of that next week if we have to. Let me go back to this. I don't want to go too fast. Okay, so Romans chapter eight thirty five. Um, it says. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Most of us have read this. None of these things can separate us from the love of God. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am fully persuaded that neither death or life or angels or principalities or powers or things present or things to come, nor height or depth nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There's in Christ again. Very, very important. How do we come into Christ? We die with him, we're buried with him, and we rise with him. In Romans 12, 12, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instantly in prayer. So he says, I know thy poverty, but thou art rich. We talked about that. That's the purification. That's the purification process of the things that we go through. So the Lord is tempering you through that process. Okay? There's... You're, that's poor in spirit, but rich in, rich in grace, rich in the Lord. Very, very important for you to understand. Wow, I feel a, a, like a heaviness on this. Like, like mm. No, like a battle. There's a battle. There's a battle. Uh, there's a battle. And I want you to know right now, I want you to come against that right now. Come on. In the name of Jesus, Satan, you're a liar. You have no power over this broadcast. You stop speaking your lies. You are disarmed. In the name of Jesus, because I have the power and I am the authority as the bride of Christ, as the wife of the Lamb, to come against you and you have to bow. He's trying to put on fear. Yeah. We break off fear. We break off fear. In Jesus' name. Okay, so thank you, Lord. I feel that it's it's a, it's it's a heavy pressure, but you know what? This is a hard word, but you know what? If you ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and to guide you and give you better understanding, you're going to come into a place yes. of freedom and knowing what the Lord is revealing in the Church of Smyrna. Yes. It's very important. It's for all of us. Every one of these, we're going to go through some pressure because we need to change. Okay, yes. plain and simple, we need to change. Okay, yes. and so. So he's saying, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but they're the synagogue of, sin, synagogue of Satan. Well, back then, the Israelites, we, we talked about this, the first century um, church, what happened was, in the Lord's eyes, it was more important uh, uh, spiritually. But the Jews that rejected the Messiah, they had no special favor with God. So it's interesting that this word Jew comes from the wor root word meaning praise. Um, <clears throat> wow. Wow. <laughs> Uh, the that? devil uh, who says that those are Jews that are not, some of these believers were cast into prison falsely accusing them before the emperors. So they took the heat off themselves during this 10 persecutions. We're going to go through that, um, but I don't want to go too fast because I, I typed all this out, but I don't want to, I want to probably go into this about, because this is really, really important next week. Um, because I really feel like the Lord has more scripture to reveal on this. Um, 
So do not yield to fear in the face of the suffering to come, but be aware of this. And it's interesting that that's the next verse. And I felt that spirit come with that pressure. So I just want you to focus on the Lord right now. And I'm going to pray through again for you because this is really, really important because I'm feeling this pressure. And there's a reason um, that the Lord is highlighting it. And so, Lord, I thank you that fear, we crush fear right now. Yes. Uh, fear doesn't come Just from you, Father. Be yes. So fear has to bow in the yes. presence of faith. So faith overtake right now. Yes. Faith yes. overtake. Because, Lord, you don't give the spirit of fear. So, Lord, I just pray that faith in your word, yes. faith in your presence, faith in your person, faith in your name would rise over this broadcast into the homes yes. of the people who are watching right yes. now. Father, that you would yes. bring them into remembrance of the areas that they overcame in their life yes. because, Father God, they believed your word. Father, you would take them back into remembrance of the things, God, that you brought them through, even though it was yes. tough, God, in prior seasons, God, to give them an understanding that it produced gold in them. It produced something that is of a high value in them in the name of Jesus. Lord, that you would take them back in remembrance, Father God, for the things that you have done, God, uh, even remembering in your word who they are, Lord Jesus, and what you have ordained for them, Father, and the different uh, milestones in their walk with you, milestones in their life, God, uh, that you turned into these stepping stones to take them higher. Lord, I thank you that you're reminding them right now of how good you are, Lord Jesus, because this is a tough word, Lord, in the church of Smyrna, in the church of suffering, and the things that we have to suffer to produce gold in us, Father God. And that you are at the refining fire, Jesus. And any time we come and live on the inside of you, you refine every area of our life. And so, Father, I pray, God, uh, that they would take this uh, book of Revelation, chapter 2, in the, in the church of Smyrna, Lord, even this week, and they would go over it and allow you, Holy Spirit, to lead them and guide them to every truth of this, every, every word in this, Father God, in these chapters, verse 8 and through, Father, that they would get a better understanding of what you want to reveal to them, Lord. Lord, because you put this in there to unveil you. Father God, you are the one, Jesus Christ, who suffered. Yes. You are the one who died and rose again. Yes. You are the first and the last. Amen. This is all about you, Lord Jesus. But you also said that we died and were buried and we rose again with you. And that we yes. were fellowshipping with your sufferings. And that we would suffer just the way Smyrna suffered, Lord Jesus. Yes. That we are part of this church. And so, Lord, I thank you, God, yes. that as we go into the second half of this, Lord Jesus, next week, Lord, that you would speak to everyone who tunes in, even during the week. Yes. And that you would reveal to them what it is that your desire and your dream was lord as as you release this lord to the angel and to john and lord i thank you for that lord i give you praise lord that it would be an exciting thing to be a part of the church of smyrna there would be an exciting thing god father to suffer for your sake lord jesus to suffer lord jesus that you said that we would do lord jesus as we let go of our lives and take on your life lord and Lord, I just give you praise and honor and glory for every outcome. I thank you that the enemy has no power. He's been disarmed already. Uh, past tense, uh, he's been disarmed and therefore he has no power. And so Lord, I just thank you right now that you reveal that to those, Father God, who are struggling right now and that pressure released in Jesus' name. And it's for your glory, Lord. And so Father, I give you praise. Help me, Lord. Help me to reveal this Church of Smyrna, Lord Jesus. Yes. Help me, Lord Jesus, to reveal and unveil your heart, Lord, concerning this, this letter, Lord, that you asked me, Lord Jesus, to release over this live. And Lord, I just thank you for that, Lord. I, I keep hearing thank that you, if Lord. you would study this out, when you hear the second part next time, you, it will be richer and richer to your soul. Thank you, Lord. Oh. Thank you, Lord. So we have a couple of prayer requests. Okay. Um, Blake says, um, let's see, for a brother that has kidney stones over a week and out of the blue got hit with uh, intense sore throat, body aches, and chills. Okay, what's his name? And um, he, Blake is asking for the prayer. He didn't say who. Okay. So, and it's for his brother, right? His, yeah, a brother. Let's just have one right now, and then I'll pray, and then you give me the next one. Okay, so Father God, we just lift up Blake um, and his brother, Lord. Lord, I just release the healing virtue of heaven. Yes. Lord, I just release the healing virtue of heaven towards his brother right now in the name of Jesus. And I command those stones to break up right now in his body. Kidney stones be released in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you right now. Yes. For a complete healing of the kidney. 
uh, pain go in Jesus' name. Um, your infection. Yes. Yes, we just rebuke infection right now in the name of Jesus. We rebuke any spirit of infirmity that's attached to that in the name of Jesus. Go. Right now. Yes. We speak yes. to you right now in the name of Jesus, down the brother the of Blake. Level. Down to the cell level. Yes, all okay. the way down to the cellular Bring level. Every cell. In the name Jesus of Jesus. Name. And and Lord, I just um wow. I just speak to the immune system. Yes. In the name of Jesus and lethargic this lethargicness. Uh, yes. I, I speak to the immune system in the name of Jesus and I command the immune system. Be healed in Jesus' name. Yes. Increase. Increase. Fatigue, go in Jesus' name. We just speak health and well-being. Anything that's disease in you, in the name of Jesus, be at ease. We speak complete harmony in your body. Yes. Yes. The complete harmony of heaven in your body. Um, I've seen something uh, wrong with his back. Uh, I don't know, but I know when you have kidney stones, you hurt in your back, but there's something yes. going on in his back. And so I speak Good. perfect Good. alignment in his back yes. in the name of Jesus. Every tendon, every fiber, every ligament in his body be made whole in Jesus' yes. name. I speak right now, even, uh, wow, to the pinched nerves in his yes. back in the name of Jesus, that you would be in perfect alignment in the name of Christ, and that you begin to be shivered up, shivered up, bend, 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 in the name of Jesus, that you'd be able to bend uh, down in the name of Jesus. Uh, complete healing, Father. I'm hearing questions of shock thank and you, wow. Jesus. I, keep, I keep hearing shock Jesus. and wow. So Jesus, like, thank you, Lord. Why is this happening? Or thank you, Lord. where did this come thank from? You, or you know, Jesus. that kind of thing. So I just thank you, Lord. peace yes. and answers from Jesus. On yes. This. Thank you, Lord. Father God, I just pray you would just bring the answers to him as he voices out those questions, Lord God, because you are there for him. Yes. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Um, this is for um, Blake's brother still. You, the, he has a testimony. There's a testimony that I don't know if something's happened in his life because um, I don't know you, but I mean, Jamie. Okay. So Jamie, your brother, there's a testimony or something in his life that the Lord wants to release from him. There, and as he releases that testimony, something that God has done in his life that is beautiful, that is big. And, and as he releases that testimony, it's like the Lord is saying as he releases that, his whole life is going to be transformed. But the testimony has just been blocked. That's why we overcome the enemy, which we know in Revelation, right? We overcome the enemy by the word of our testimony. Um, and we love not our own lives unto death. And so what's happened is the enemy has robbed his testimony, robbed his tongue as testimony. And so it's caused all these ailments to follow. And so as he opens up his mouth and releases his testimony. So we just speak to the testimony in Jamie to come forth in the name of Jesus with power and with demonstration. That the testimony would flow through him. The testimony of fire would come through him. It could be something that, that was good that happened in his life that, that it can't be explained away. God did it. Whether he knows it or not, it's like this this life is going to come to him as he expresses it. And wholeness is going to come to him. And so we just speak to that testimony, come alive in Jesus' name and expand and expound. And the virtue of heaven is going to visit him when that happens. Okay, so is there anyone else? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, so Father, I just thank you. Um, are we close to time? Man, I have so much more I want to go into. Okay, wow. <laughs> Lord, I don't know how I'm going to do these revelations. I'm going to have to do one sentence at a time. <laughs> Jesus, I love you. I thank you that you saw fit to even choose us, yes. Lord. We have no yes. clue what we're doing. Thank you, Lord. But Lord, you're everything. We love you, Jesus. We honor you. We bless you. We glorify your holy name. Lord, I thank you that everyone will receive this word. Lord Jesus, will chew on this word. We'll go back over it, Lord. And Lord, that, that this word will find its place on the inside of your people, Lord. Yes. And Lord, that your dream will come alive, that the dream that you dreamed when you released this word to the angel and then to John. Yes. 
the unveiling of who you are, the unveiling of who we are, the unveiling of all of us, Lord Jesus, the unveiling of heaven, Lord. And Lord, I just thank you that you give us the grace, the empowerment to endure, to get through these seven churches, Lord. Yes, Lord. That you give us the grace, Lord, the empowerment from heaven, the ability yes. of God to release your heart, Lord. And Lord, I just honor you and I bless you and I thank you. I thank you for every soul watching. Yes. That it's your desire, Lord Jesus, that we would dwell in you. That we would dwell in you, Jesus because you've overcome the world, that we would lose our own life and gain yours, Lord. Yes. And I thank you for that. And so, Lord, help me to decipher what it is you would have us to go into next week as the yes. second half yes. of the Church of Smyrna. Yes. Just help me to put it together where people can understand, Lord, by your Holy yes. Spirit. Yes. Lord, that they would receive, Lord, by your Spirit, Lord. And I thank you for that, God. Help me to slow down, Lord Jesus, to reveal your heart. What a distinct pleasure, Lord, to serve you, to honor you, and to adore you. And Lord, thank you for visiting and unveiling yourself. Thank you for visiting everyone on this live, Lord, so that you would reveal to them your desire to occupy and to dwell with them, Lord Jesus. I bless you. I honor you, and I thank you. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for revelation. Thank you for translating the letter of Smyrna. Thank you for translating, yes. hallelujah, the letter of the Lord's heart, Lord, this Shabbat Le'en, to those who are watching, to us, that we would get a greater revelation of what it means to be suffering, to fellowship with your sufferings, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for showing us. And I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would give a revelation of the cross to everyone watching, a revelation of the cross to us, to everyone watching, and to everyone who will watch in the future. Give them a revelation of the cross, a revelation of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that they would encounter you as you reveal the heart of Jesus and the love of God. Hallelujah. That was signed in the blood, the blood of the Christ, the blood of the Son. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. Well, we love y'all. Yes. That was real deep. Thank We're going to see y'all uh, on Fridays, every Friday at 7. Um, we're going to be doing these. And so... Yes. Whew. Thank you for your comments. I'm sorry we yes. can't go through them while we're yeah while well, we're on the because yes I <laughs> yeah anyway <laughs> thank you very much they get it we'll see you guys we're not later. professionals like we said yes. okay so thank, thank you. you for tuning in thank you love y'all thank you thank love you Lily's. thank you see you next week.